Hello, my name's Caroline and this is Movement Style Yoga and Pilates. We're going to flow into a hamstring lengthening sequence now, uh, a little bit of cat stretch rolling up to standing uh, from there. This is the cool down segment of a series of three of these videos, um, but also you can practice the little sequence on its own. So let's come down onto the back. We're going to set up our neutral spine position. So a little spotlight on the tailbone, shiny to between the heels, space at the back of the waist, spine through the back of the ribcage in contact with the mat, length through the back of the neck, space between the chin and the top of the breastbone. Our broad and wide scoop and hollow in the lower abdomen, our imaginary belt fastened, and we're just going to pop a resistance band over the sole of the right foot. So ribs squeezing in towards the spine, waist working. And then from here, from out of this knee float position, we're going to lengthen upwards between the sitting bone and the heel to stretch the back of the leg. So now in the other two videos that we've been doing, we've been thinking a lot about the connection between the sitting bone and the heel, but we've been actually contracting and engaging the muscles through that pathway. And this time we're opening the muscles through that pathway. But again, see if you can really find a connection, sitting bone flowing up through the muscles in the back of the thigh, connecting over the back of the knee into the calf and on through towards the heel, rather than that you're just trying to push your heel into a random space somewhere above you. Now, earlier in the other videos, I've been talking about when the core strength is engaged, the weight of the spine is really suspended within the core. We feel the weight of our sitting bones on the mat, shoulder, girdle, head, but the weight of the spine is really contained within the core. Now, when we stretch the leg up, it tends to be that people let the pelvis push down into the floor, and you may be able to see that I'm really working not to do that. I'm using the broad and wide scoop and hollow, the strength in the back of my waist and around the base of my ribcage to prevent that from happening. Now, up here, we're going to think about the leg circling exercise. And it's very similar to the strength that we worked in the twist in the mat work section in the second video. But here, instead of using the strength to twist the spine, we're using the core strength to maintain the pelvis in position. So as the leg moves out towards the side, I need to use the muscles in the side and the back of the waist to keep the pelvis in position. I need to emphasize the strength in the lower abdomen on my working leg side to maintain the pelvis in position. As the leg comes back to the center and forward, Again, it's the whole of the back of the waist that I need to use to prevent the weight of the leg sinking the small of the back into the mat. Now, if your hamstring flexibility isn't sufficient to work this movement with an extended knee, you can work it with a bent knee. I'm all going to reverse the direction of the circling action now. So leg moves inwards first, away from us, wide and forwards again. And we're really aiming for a circular action. Now just check that the supporting leg isn't gripping and pushing into the floor in order to support the midsection. I'm really trying to keep a circular action, not a star or a hexagon, which I almost did there again. So there we are, we've worked that through, I think about six times in that direction as well. Then we can take up our resistance band again, pop it around the sole of the foot and extend. Just going to let the leg lower. So now we are activating the muscles again between the sitting bone and the heel, activating that connection. We're weaving in the small of back, lower back strength, letting that small of back, lower back strength overlay the belt strength. And the resistance band is there potentially to protect the lower back if the muscles shouldn't be strong enough. But if the muscles are quite strong, you're trying to use the resistance band as resistance. Train the back of the leg, train the lower back against the resistance of the band. 
If you feel strong, if you feel steady, if the base of the spine is well supported, you can open up the range of movement. As you're releasing up each time again, just thinking about maintaining your neutral spine, holding on to the back of your waist, holding on to your broad and wide scoop and hollow. Again, we can just check that the supporting leg isn't stabilizing us. We stay stable when we take it off the floor. And releasing. Good, well done. So we've done that side. And then just thinking about the second side. So we quickly come through into our knee float or knee fold position. Neutral spine in place, sense of the spine being really supported and suspended within the core muscles. And the connection between the sitting bone and the heel again. Now, if you haven't got a resistance band, you might not have a resistance band, of course, you can still work that stretch and lengthening without the resistance band. Resistance band just helps to guide you a little bit and does give you a little bit of support. It's helpful, takes some of the weight of the leg away, and that allows the muscles to stretch just a little bit more readily. But as you can see, I'm working it without the band. If you've got a band, continue with the band. So again, core muscles working quite strongly. We can get up to a nice extended position. And then again, the leg moves slightly forwards. It moves slightly wide. And we have to work really hard in the side and back of waist, and particularly in one side of our pelvic pelvis to hold on to the position of the neutral spine as the leg is circling in the hip joint. Now we circled the leg in the hip joint in the second video as well, and we were really using the muscles, glutes, low glutes, to circle the leg in the all fours and here as well. Control the action of the leg using the glutes and the low glutes. So as before, so we complete those six circles, as before, if it suits you better, or it feels more comfortable, just work your circling action with the knee band. It's still quite hard work. And again, you're still working to activate that movement around the hip joint using the gluteal muscles, you know, helping to stabilize you and also bring the leg out, pelvic down and lower abdomen back in. So then after the six circles there, we think about extending. If you've got your resistance band, you're popping the resistance band around the sole of the foot again. If you haven't got a resistance band, crown, sacrum, tailbone, inside hip, inside knee heel, weave in that small back, lower back strength, pull up through the glutes and the low glutes, keep the front of the leg connecting. Breathe in to release back up. Breathing out to power down. So just going part way until you get used to feeling that you've really got the strength working. So there's no change of weight between the pelvis and the floor. In some ways, I think it's easier when you haven't got the resistance band, when you bring the other leg away from the floor. But in either instance, it helps you to know that this leg isn't stabilizing the pelvis by working. These muscles as well keep threading the strength of the leg back into your hip joint. So just take care if you've brought the other leg up that you're not letting it drift forwards to counterweight the action of this leg. We keep it right above the hip weight, the hip joint, sorry, um, so that it's not counterweighting and helping you. <laughs> and then the last one. So again, we're going to hug the legs in towards us, just circling the hips on the mat two or three times there and releasing. And then from here, we're going to roll over, come onto one side and send the hips back and towards the heels. Once again, just releasing the lower back, stretching out the spine. So we're going to move from the the extended child position that we came into at the end of the hamstring opening sequence. 
before we come forwards, thinking about broadening out through your pelvis, broadening out through the ribs and the shoulders, your collarbones nice and open, just letting the shoulder blades move in the direction of the sitting bones. If you think back to the release and return exercise that we did all the way back in the warm up for this sequence, I want you to think about engaging the muscles a little bit between the shoulder blades, drawing the shoulder blades down the back, feeling the connection between the back of the upper arm and the shoulder blade, moving forwards, working to hold that connection. Nice, broad and wide, scoop and hollow in the lower abdomen, keeping the weight of the pelvis lifted off the thigh bones, belt fastened, navel drawing to the spine and the breastbone hugging back towards the spine. So let's flow a little bit here in cat stretch to mobilise the spine and stretch it out. So we can let the muscles just in front of the tailbone lift up. We can hollow the muscles at the very base of the lower abdomen, broad and wide scoop and hollow out towards the crest of the hip bones, really deepening that and intensifying that. Sides of the waist hug in and the centre of the front of the abdomen lifts up and back. Breastbone hugs really intensely back to the spine to create this rounded spine position. And we can breathe in here. And then once again, with an exhalation, we're going to lengthen the tailbone back and behind us as if we're shining a spotlight onto the wall directly behind us. Each vertebra moves downwards and forwards, belt fastened. Breastbone hugs back to the spine. And again, this connection between the shoulder blades and the upper back, just gently so you feel some tension between them. Shoulder blades moving in the direction of the sitting bones and the work between the shoulder blade and the back of the upper arm. Now here we're going to continue this movement. We keep the abdominal muscles strong, maintain the same space between the base of the rib cage and the crests of the hip bones as we open and lengthen the front of the chest forwards. Collarbones stay broad and the breastbone and spine move together. So now from here, tailbone pulls under, deep lift in the muscles directly in front of the tailbone, hollowing in the lower abdomen, navel pulls to the spine, sides of the waist lifting and up, Breastbone hugs back, breathing in here. Then again, the core strength working to support the spine as we lengthen it out again, to connect the arms into the upper back. Base of the rib cage stays strong. And then breastbone and spine move together, opening forwards and upwards. It's as if the shoulder blades are moving down the back, but essentially they stay in the same position. So once again, flowing downwards. Breathing in here, breathing out to lengthen through the whole spine, breathing in just the upper spine, lungs upwards and outwards. So one more cat stretch here. We need to keep the work really going through the core muscles, the insides of the hip joints, staying nice and relaxed. And again, lengthening through. So from there, we're going to send the hips back and towards the heels again, taking the weight off the wrists. And then, as you're ready, crawling forwards along the mat. So we're going to rest on the forearms. And again, lift in the muscles just in front of the tailbone, that broad and wide scoop and hollow, really drawing up and back very firmly, navel pulling to the spine, the elasticated belt working, squeezing the waist away from it and the muscles around the base of the ribcage still working, breastbone and spine hugging towards each other. So once again, it's that release and return connection from behind, the arms connecting into the shoulder blade, shoulders shrugging away from the ears, broad and wide across the collarbones, breastbone and spine hug together. So our exhalation lengthens the spine forwards and upwards. You can breathe in here, breathing wide. And once again, breathing out to flow back down again. So now just as with the cat stretch in the upward facing cat, we're aiming to keep this part of the body exactly the same. The distance between the base of the rib cage and the crest of the hip bones staying the same. So the spine is lengthening forwards. Pelvis is broad. Ribs are broad and wide. Collarbones and shoulders are broad and wide. So the spine has free passage. Breathing in up here, breathing out to flow back down. You may be able to see that the movement is coming from out of the core strength, coming from out of the upper back strength. And as I lengthen the spine and extend it, when my upper back muscles are working, it's that same strength that allows the spine to hyperextend or arc. So 
So let's just give that one more go. Lots of breath. Welcoming the back of the chest away from the spine, the front of the chest away from the breastbone. But breastbone and spine keep hugging together. And come rolling back down. And once more, we just stretch my right back, releasing the lower back. And from here, we're going to think about rolling ourselves up to standing. So if you have just done the hamstring opening sequence in the videos, you'd be quite open already in the hamstrings. If you haven't, you might prefer to take a little bit of support through bricks or blocks in the forward bend. So bricks or blocks can support you if your hamstrings aren't feeling too stretched. Let's just bring them in front and still use your core strength to support the weight of the trunk of the body, even if you've got bricks or blocks not really there to lean into too much, but to take the, the tension, the stress out of hamstrings if they're really not too flexible. I'm just going to spend a few moments here just to, again, feel the weight as even as we can between the heels and the balls of the feet. And the feet just aligned underneath the sitting bones, so this connection again, sitting bones and heels. And then if we really use the broad and wide scoop and hollow in the lower abdomen, we can lift the weight of the pelvis gently away from the tops of the thigh bones. And then we're opening up from the heels to the sitting bones. Or you can work the other way from the sitting bones to the heels, just depending on how your, your mind works with the space first. So again, it, it is possible to, to work the position without bricks or blocks, the tailbone moving up and away. And again, aiming to keep the weight even and really working on that connection between the sitting bones and the heels and the lengthening of the spine, tailbone to crown, supporting it with your core muscles, shoulder blades moving up the back and again that breadth in the shoulders, breadth in the ribs to help you. So now from here we're going to eventually roll up towards standing, so the roll up. The sitting bones drawing through, coming above the heels, spotlight on the tailbone shining to between the heels, broad and wide scoop and hollow in the lower abdomen really lifting the weight of the pelvis off the thigh bones back of the waist strength coming in, weaving that small of back, lower back strength down to connect with the gluteal strength and the low glutes. Upper back unfolds, behind the breastbone, the spine lifting, collarbones opening, and again, the connection between the shoulder blades and the upper arms. So let's breathe in here. Exhalation to roll forwards through the upper spine first, hugging the breastbone to the spine, keeping the collarbones broad, keeping the pelvis broad. Each vertebra stays as tall as possible until it's rolling forwards and again, always letting the knees bend so that you can flow the spine. I'm going to breathe in here, opening the spine, tailbone to crown, coming back again to that sense of the shoulder blades moving up the back, the arms extended, connecting into the upper back. As we're ready again, arms drop back towards the sides of the body, sitting bones 
come in above the heels as quickly as you can. Tailbone directs the spotlight between the heels. Pelvic scoop and hollow, smaller back, lower back strength. Glutes pull up to meet it. Upper back engages strength behind you. Now, if you're feeling really centered, if you've got the strength connecting between the heels and the sitting bones, you may be able to come into a rise. You may be able to release the arms up, heels lowering, arms coming down. So we'll do one more of those. Rolling forwards, letting the spine have free passage. Using core strength to control each vertebra as you flow through. Once again, keeping the pelvic strength going, that broad and wide scoop and hollow lengthening the sitting bones back, opening the sides of the trunk forwards, shoulder blades move up the back in the direction of the sitting bones, hug the breastbone and the spine together. Once again, as you're really breathing out, sitting bones come in above the heels, spotlight on the tailbone, back of the waist working, glutial strength pulling up, scoop and hollow in the lower abdomen, arms connecting to the upper back, connection between the sitting bones and the heels, you may be able to come into that rise, arms flowing up, lots of length through the body. Keep your glutial muscles working to control lowering the heels. And with the exhalation, keep diving up into the crown of the head as the arms come down. So here we are at the end, tall, free, well aligned. I hope that you've enjoyed the sequence and thank you for watching.